Hello everybody, this is Stephen Allison and this is my Manchester United youth review. Now another week is in the history books for the academy lads, but we do have a little bit of news for you. Now the mail broke the names of one of these lads, but there's actually two of these lads. There's two Brazilians on trial at the moment, both of them under 16s. I think they're both being looked at as possible under 18s, but I'm not sure what the, the ruling is about signing Brazilians. Uh, whether they've got a dual passport, I don't know. That's usually a loophole that we look for. But if they are Brazilian, I think, like Rafael and Fabio, you can't sign them until they're 18. So you might see these lads go back to their countries and develop there for a couple of years if we do decide to sign them before bringing them over. Now, the mail released the name of one of them, Matias Marcosi. No idea on position for him or the lad that we don't know the name of. Um, just that there's two Brazilian lads on trial. Uh, and that's it. That we know for for right now but it does show that what we're talking about in terms of scouting worldwide players and bringing in the very best of local talent is the aim of Nicky Butt and the new coaching regime at the academy so sticking with under 18s for a second little bit of success this weekend there was a Premier League tournament held in Newcastle on Sunday which Manchester United won their group uh, we had Blackburn we had Newcastle and we had Aston Villa we drew with Villa beat Blackburn beat Newcastle so good positive stuff all around. I'm hoping to get a little bit more eyes on with the under 16s. There's um, a couple of decent performances that I've seen as I've been watching the under 18s as well. But I might try and see if I can go and watch a full 90 minutes of the under 16s. Let you know who the standout players are. Let you know who looks like they're going to be coming through. There's definitely a couple of players that I think would probably slot nicely into the under 18s. But the under 18s is such a young side as it is at the moment. Let these guys develop at under 16s and let's see how they do next season. So moving on to the 18s. The 18s played Stoke last weekend, beating them 2-0. Nissan Burkhart getting on the score sheet, adding to his tally now two goals. And I've been racking my brain trying to think of who Nissan Burkhart plays the game like. He's very aggressive. He's direct. He's got clinical finishing. And the only person I can think of really is Ruud van Nistelrooy. He reminds me of that because he's got that height. He's got that build. He's got that... Sort of just constant relentless attitude. I think he's probably a little bit better outside the box than Ruud van Nistelrooy is. I doubt he's going to be as good inside the box as Ruud van Nistelrooy. Might have been one of the most natural goal scorers I've ever seen. But I'm just talking about the way he plays the game. Do you know that? If you, when you remember Ruud van Nistelrooy, you just remember him sprinting everywhere, don't you? Defending, chasing down defenders who've got the ball, trying to get on the end of stuff. That's the sort of thing that I'm seeing that Nissan Burkhardt has got. He's not like a Michael Owen. He's not like a, a Javier Hernandez. He, he's a big lad. He's aggressive. And I, I really like the look of him so far. He started adding to his goals now. He needs some regular games. And I think he's going to cement that number nine spot in um, the under-18s. And that's fantastic. Now, there's a couple of other good things going on in the under-18s at the moment. It looks like the midfield is becoming settled. And Cal Whelan and DJ Buffonge at the heart of that. They're forming what's looking out to be a little bit of a formidable partnership and the platform that them two are putting together is allowing Angel Gomez, who let's face it is the star of this team, they're allowing him the freedom to go and play football and he is playing football. Five goals, five assists in only six matches so far this season. They, uh, he's, he's, he's just smashing it and he was with the England under-17 side last night, captain of the England under-17 side side last night scored again got two more assists so that's now two goals and I think three assists in just two games both of which he's been captain for the England under 17s the hype is real about Angel Gomez if you get the opportunity get yourself down to the under 18s and go and watch Angel Gomez because you are in for a footballing treat his movement on the ball his movement off the ball his knowledge of where everybody is on the pitch I was talking to Ben that I did a podcast with this morning about him and I was saying there was a there was one of the games earlier this season where he received the ball with his back to where he ended up putting it. He received it around about the halfway line. He allowed the ball to come past him. He didn't touch it and he hits it first time with the outside of his foot, sends the ball on an arc to land perfectly for the right winger who was waiting for it. And I'm like, OK, I understand you, you roughly know the sort of positions players are going to be taking up on the pitch. He knows where he is on the pitch, but he doesn't know if that guy's marked. And the fact that he turned round, looks up and pings it with one touch, that's just one example of what he's doing. The weight on the balls that he puts through, his dictation of the game, it's absolutely fantastic and it is a joy to watch. Get yourself down there, go and see him because this lad has got a future as big as the sun. Honestly, it's absolutely massive. Um, there's some other players in the 18s as well that I am starting to really take note of and start to really like the look of. O'Connor, despite the, the small stature that he's got, He's coming in, he's really impressing me with some of the things that he's doing at the moment. Um, and I think the good thing is that all of these players, they're all very young under-18s. 
Angel, Chong, Burkhart, O'Connor. These are all 16-year-olds. These are all lads that have got another couple of years at under-18s before they need to move up into the under-23s and stuff like that. So we are building towards a very capable side. And if we don't win the FA Youth Cup this season, I think it's possible that we can win it next season. And if not, the season after, because a lot of these lads are still going to be around in there. Um, which takes us to the under-23s, doesn't it? Which is a little bit frustrating. It's not all going so well in the under-23s. The under-23s, abundance of talent at this level, but not an abundance of balance. We've said it loads, haven't we? I'm almost sick of saying it. Loads of defenders, loads of midfielders, no attackers, no wingers, no centre-forwards, no natural number nines, and that is what is killing this side at the moment. And it's frustrating. It's You feel sorry for the players because you're like... I can see the effort that you guys are putting in. No one's tossing it off in the under-23s. But you watch the effort that they're putting in, you're going, if only they had. If only they had a number nine. If only they had a number nine that's going to drag this defence away a little bit and who's going to run into the channel. Because the players will find him. Harrop will find him. The midfield will find him. But they don't have that sort of player. So, at the moment, Matty Willock is playing as a number nine. And I like Matty Willock. I like his honesty. I like his his attitude. I like everything about him. He's a good footballer but he's a midfielder and he's playing number nine the good thing is Matty Willock is being forced to develop another side to his game and the risk-taking side to his game which we've never seen before when we eventually get a number nine for this team Matty Willock's going to move back and he's going to become a massively key part of this team because it's been forced to be taking risks at this level and that is really dragging out the best of him and it's, it's good to see but he's not a number nine he's not making the runs that a number nine sees he's not making those those runs into a channel or the hold-up play that our number nine has got. He's learning on the fly and he's learning at a very, very high level. So Matty Willock's playing great, but he's not a number nine. He's doing great for his development. When he eventually moves back, you're going to really see that. But this team needs a number nine to make it happen. Um, Monday, they went to uh, Everton, Southport FC. I drove over there, got stuck in traffic. It was absolutely pissing down. Got soaked, walking to the ground and then watched us lose 2-0. Uh, Everton took the lead in the first half of a defensive error on the back of uh, a Regan Poole mistake. Quite uncharacteristic Regan Poole mistake. He's looked very capable, very assured. This was just a schoolboy error and it was unfortunate that it led to a goal. Uh, Calvert-Lewis, Calvert-Lewin? I think, I can't remember the name. Calvert-Lewin, number 10 for Everton. He scored the goal. This was the easiest thing he did all night, was just passing it into the back of the net for the goal. Uh, but he was probably man of the match for me. He was uh, a threat. He was uh, excellent on the ball, showed good feet, good movement, real intelligence, but also a real classiness to the way he played. Don't think it'd be worth United signing him for this team because he's quite a similar sort of player to Harrop, but he was very good uh, and deadly and caused us havoc all night long. Umar Nias got the winner in the second half. Uh, I think Tuan Zebe probably could have done a little better. The ball was sort of a looping ball that dropped in just behind him. Nias actually headed it home standing still he didn't even have to jump to get on the end of it it was really strange the high ball come in it just sort of dipped right at the last minute he gets his head on it he puts it away it's 2-0 it was a fair result Everton dominated the game we didn't have that attacking outlet as I said it's like four defenders six midfielders no one's dragging anyone anywhere there's no channels to play things into and that is United's problem at the moment and I don't know I can't imagine Warren Joyce was happy with it, this team going into this season I am sure that someone above him has said there's no money for transfers for this age group or something along those lines. Maybe they're looking a little bit more long-term and they're looking at bringing in these 16-year-olds, which we've done very well with Chong, with Burkhart, with O'Connor. Maybe we're saying we're bringing in the 16-year-olds, you're just going to have to be patient because we're blowing the budget on them for the future rather than on players who perhaps aren't quite good enough at 19 or 20 just to make up the numbers in the 23s but it means we're going to have a very frustrating season for the under 23s especially when Jose Mourinho doesn't want to allow the likes of Fosu Mensa or Memphis who are still eligible for this age group even so Luke Shaw who could bolster this team who could do something in this team if them lads aren't allowed to come into this team to get minutes because they need minutes there's a lot of players needed minutes in the first team that just seem to have been like completely disconnected from the under 23s um then they're going to struggle. They're going to struggle without a, a number nine. Maybe Burkhart or Bowie can come up from the under-18s and lead the line. Um, we didn't sign Idris Kanu. Supposedly there's issues, there's baggage that the club didn't want to go with is the reason why we've not signed him. There probably was also a fee that we needed to pay in compensation to West Ham. So I think when you add up that, there's probably some issues, a little bit of baggage, uh, and there's going to be a bit of a fee on there as well. The club's gone, do you know what? Is he as good as... Burkhart and Bowie, 
maybe he's in that ballpark, but for the issue, the aggro and all the rest of it, they've gone. I don't think so. We don't fancy it, which is a shame because this guy's already played under 21s last season as 15 year old for West Ham. He's big enough. This guy could just literally just do the job. Even if his job was just like, shut your mouth, get up front, play number nine in this team because we need a number nine, then that would be fine. This team needs a number nine or it's going to stunt the development of the other players around them because they can't really be learning the balls that a number, a number nine is going to be doing. They can't really be banging crosses in because people aren't there a little bit. So, it's frustrating. We're in for a frustrating season with the under-23s. Um, but, do you know what? There is some wonderful players in there. Still, Joe Riley had another decent game. Um, Tuan Zabi was all class. You know, I, I, maybe I'm being a little bit harsh on him for the goal. But apart from that, everything he did on the ball was fantastic. Some of his tackles, he's gone to the ground and you're going, uh, and he gets it ball perfect. Stands up, plays the ball. Fantastic. Someone needs to take a gamble on him. He's far too good for this under-23 level. He needs testing. Otherwise, he's not going to grow. Um, again, Harrop looked good. Uh, I'm trying to think who else was in the midfield. It was a good team performance. We were just not as good as Everton. Everton, real balanced team, real play to it. I mean, I think Diaz, has, they signed him for quite a lot of cash, I think, this summer. So, they've got a big-name striker up front. We're playing a midfielder. It was always going to happen, really. Uh, we did create chances. We didn't take the chances. That's another thing a number nine is going to bring to the team. So the fixtures that we've got now, the under-18s play on Saturday in Middlesbrough. I was like that about going. It's a bit far. It's like an eight-hour round-trip day. I think I'm going to leave it. I'll watch it on MUTV. So 18s play on 1st of October against Middlesbrough. Uh, and then the next game is going to be the 8th of October at home to Sunderland. We will be at that one, I think, unless we've got a game on the Saturday. I need to check that out, actually. I don't think we have a game. No, that's it, the National Week, isn't it? We don't have a game. I will be going. Uh, and then the 23's next game is Liverpool at home at Leeds Sports Village on a Tuesday. Get yourself down there. Uh, the 18th of October. And the 24th of October, we are at home to Arsenal. Uh, I think that's going to be Leeds Sports Village as well. Um, they've not said if that's Old Trafford or not. The Monday night ones are often at Old Trafford, but I think this one is going to be at Leeds Sports Village. Uh, it, it's a it's a while away yet. Anyway, it's three, four weeks off. So if it changes, I will let you know in next week's Youth Review. So thank you for joining us for the Youth Review. Nice big fat thumbs up, please. Please share this because I think this is one of the only videos that's out there that's talking about the youth. People seem to like it. So please share it. It's really appreciated. If you've got a website and you want to embed it, please embed it as well. Uh, hit me up in the Reddit, um, r slash Housen, if you want to discuss anything about um, this video, anything about the youth or anything like that. And I'll see you next Thursday for the Youth Review. So hit me up on Reddit. Make sure you tune in tomorrow night because the Thursday night podcast, obviously I'm on the way to Old Trafford in a second. Uh, the Thursday night podcast has been moved to Friday because of the Zoya match. So we'll see you at 9 o'clock tomorrow night for the Thursday night podcast this time on a Friday. Thank you for watching. See you in a bit.